today guys i'm going to get back up on uh back on finishing up this metal project i have got the trim on except for the corner pieces i haven't put them on purpose yet because i need access to my stringers uh i want to on these stringers i run a a, str uh, a screw down i set up a guideline so i can make a nice pretty row and i've got three more rows of screws to put in here before i put on the corner mold and tie it all together and finish it up so Now these screws, they will go in on their own and a lot of guys that are pros, they don't pre-drill. But um, with me being a weekend warrior, I have found sometimes that as I'm trying to go in, even though this is thin, fairly thin aluminum, it'll wander and I don't want it to do that. So you don't have to, you can, you can just go straight in with this if you like, but I like pre-drilling my holes. And you always wanna make sure that you use a bit that's just a little bit smaller than the diameter of your screw because you want this to be a snug fit around the hole that you just drilled. That will also help prevent water getting in if the rubber washer fails. Won't prevent it completely, but it'll help keep where it's minimal. So anyway, I'm gonna continue on. I, um, oh, and the other thing is, is when you're doing this, uh, when you're up in the middle part of this, you just put screws on one side of the hump and I'm doing mine on the right, and so I just go to the right side of every hump, and that's how I drill my holes. And that's kind of standard practice. And the only exception to that is the row that's on the end, and on the row that's on the end, uh, you do it on both sides of the hump to make sure everything is pulled down nice and tight, and that way the air does not get underneath when the wind blows to, to pull this loose. So hey guys, jump forward a couple of days. Uh, got called away yesterday uh, on another job and uh, was unable to finish up working on the shed. Uh, so I am finished now with all of the screws up top. And the only thing that I have left to do is um, doing these trim moldings on the corners. Let me get some measurements and I will get this up and bring you along and I'll explain as I'm going why I love this piece, why Anybody that's doing a metal, metal roofing definitely needs to do, use this piece. You can get by without it, but I'll explain why I think it's so important. Okay guys, I went ahead and made the first cut. I didn't video this because you've seen something very similar. Uh, this is the same cut like it is on the fascia board. You come back, I already know from cutting the uh, roof trusses that I'll come back an inch and a half. So I made that measurement, made that cut. I've already trial fitted it, we're good up here. So now I'm going to uh, hand slide this in place again and now I'm going to work on this end I'll reposition my ladder and I'm going to set it in place and now I'm going to mark the end so I can get the length of it cut right when I had them made I ordered them just a little bit long so I had plenty to work with and guys you'll see that there's a flat spot a ridge up down and a kick out the kick out is to throw the water off and the flat spot is where you line up to put your screws in to lock this in place. You'll do, we'll do screws on top of this flat ridge here, and then we'll do screws into the side here. But first, I've got to get this measurement. I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie, and we'll get it cut to length, and then we'll install. Now normally I would wait till later on in the afternoon to be when it's a little cooler and obviously I can take advantage of all the shade of the trees but man guys we've got thunderstorms coming this afternoon I've already looked at the radar and there is a line headed my way I've only got about an hour even though the sun is out now I've only got about an hour before that whole line of thunderstorms get here and we're, we're supposed to have some pretty intense stuff this evening so I'm fighting the clock and anyway yes if you wonder 
It is some kind of hot. I think the heat index is about 90, 95. All right, and once again, we're just gonna make little bitty snips and try to stay as straight as possibly can. Okay guys, I want to keep the uniformity, so right here is a row of my uh, screws that lock down the regular sheet in on top. So I know there's a 2x4 right underneath here and I want to screw into that and lock in the good solid meat. So I'm going to follow this line over. I'm on this flat part on top and this is where I'm going to drill through. go and then following the same trend I'm gonna come just above where that metal kicks out that I told you about where the water would go off and I've got two by six roof truss over here which is good wood for me to go into so I'm gonna follow that straight line and I'm gonna drill through both of these metals And I'm gonna repeat this process all the way down. I'm gonna to go to the other end next and make sure I've got it all nice and straight and then come in and do the middle. But let me explain why this is. Let me move you guys where you can see a little bit better. So this is what I've been talking about that's so awesome. Let me get these out of the way so you guys can see. So now with this piece in, you have got, no matter which direction the wind is blowing, no matter which way the rain is coming, it cannot get underneath the side. Whatever hits here, there's this sheeting goes all the way over to the edge and there's a ri these ridges, there's a ridge underneath here. That's one of the reasons why I'm not sealing this. If I wanted to, I could put a foam tape underneath here and I could seal it, but there's no need because there's a ridge. So the water cannot run off this edge. If any water gets underneath here, it's just gonna flow down and out. But the biggest thing is, all right, so we're gonna keep the water out but the biggest thing is also we're gonna keep the wind from doing damage. Uh, anybody that's seen the old barns, you see the edges of these, they have gotten weak, the screws have pulled loose, and the metal is just flapping up and down like this. This piece alone, by having it here and on the end, and again, I'm gonna do multiple screws down, this will keep all of this locked in long term. It protects it, keeps the sun off of it, keeps the water out of it, keeps the wind from getting under it, and it'll make it last a long time. And besides all of that, Man, doesn't that look so pretty. So this is why this is my favorite piece to install. All right, guys, let me get the other end and we'll finish putting this piece on after this one. I got one more to go and then I'm done. Guys, I will swing the camera around and show you the reveal. I'm excited in the way it all turned out. This is a job that has been way overdue, needing to get done. And obviously, again, uh, I'm pushing to get this finished because uh, I've already had the gentleman come out and give me the quote for installing the gutters. We're gonna be doing jumbo gutters and we're gonna have three downspouts. And so I'm really excited to get that added. Again, once we get this put on, we'll be doing trenches, having the downspouts feed into PVC pipe, and we'll go over this way and discharge them into the creek. I'm excited to be getting that done. Again, that's getting all of this water instead of it coming down and making mud 
it's just going to be taken out of here. So let me get down to this side and show you the other real quick. And I think all this turned out really good. It just looks so much nicer. So it, you know, it now looks finished. I guess that's the big thing. And guys, you take care and remember here at Project Next One, there's many more coming. No end to that list. So I will be catching you guys soon. Take care and we'll see you later.